So Brian, one of the things that I see uh, in handling divorces um, is is the uncertainty and the difficulty that clients have in dealing with that. And and in one particular area is you know how they're going to pay for things, how they're going to survive. You know, going from a household that had two incomes living in one house, and now you know they've got you know one income uh, for each household. And they they uh, they often have a hard time coming to grips with you know how am I going to pay for the house or my apartment or how am I going to help take care of the kids now that I've only got you know half of the income that I used to have and um, you know a lot of times that that comes into play obviously when I'm dealing with alimony uh, whether it's the the person who has to pay the payor you know what's that person's ability to pay how am I going to pay for everything. For my own needs plus take care of the spouse the former spouse or sometimes it's again if it's the recipient you know i don't have enough money how am i going to make ends meet you know i'm used to living in this house um that you know the kids grew up in and i really want to stay in that house but maybe that doesn't make the most sense for either party i mean in your practice as a financial planner what do you what do you see well as you're talking chris you know i think about how as humans, we don't like change. We get comfortable with the way our life is. And when all of a sudden things are changed on us, we don't like that. And they wrote a book years ago called Who Moved My Cheese? And they talked about that, you know? Uh, change happens to us, whether it's at our job, our organization. Um, and if, and, and the, you know, the other thing that, that comes to mind as you were speaking is that emotional attachment that we all tend to, to have toward our house or, you know, I drive this car. This is the kind of car I drive. And in fact, I, you know, I was telling you earlier today, I went through a business divorce, Chris, and I had a, you know, two business partners and we bought an old home and we renovated it and we put all this blood, sweat and tears into making this home so beautiful so that we could use it as our office. And I was driving a Mercedes and one of my business partners quit, moved out and stopped paying his share of the mortgage. And I had that emotional attachment to the building. I didn't want to sell this beautiful building that we had just renovated. Right. And, you know, you think of yourself, well, I'm Brian. I drive a Mercedes. Well, you know, I had to make cutbacks. And frankly, I didn't make them as a younger, you know, man. I, I, I didn't make the cutbacks as quickly as I should have. Right. And so you hold on to the building and you're trying to pay it. And so the, 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 the commonality that I find here is, is, you know, whether it's a business divorce or a husband and wife getting divorced and you don't want to, you don't want to go live in an apartment. You want that house or whatever. And, but the problem is, is we hang on to these emotional attachments so long that we're spending ourselves in a downward spiral because we want to have the same lifestyle that we had when we had two incomes Right. And we have the exact same lifestyle with the one income. But the fact is, is we may have to take a step down. We may have to make changes. But you know what I found in my life and what my clients have told me that they've found in their situations is that when you make the cutbacks, and that's what I did. I mean, we sold the two Mercedes and we got one Nissan Altima, one car, and it was a Nissan Altima. And, you know, you think, oh, you know, this is going to be so bad. Well, the Nissan Altima actually was larger. It felt a little more luxurious than the Mercedes. Right. And, you know, I, I found and some of my clients have told me that they have found that when you make these cutbacks, it's not as hard as you think it's going to be. Right. And once you get in the apartment and you think, oh, man, I don't want to live in an apartment, you know, it's a new beginning and you can find ways to, to, to be happy and comfortable and you'll find pros and cons wherever you live. You may find things that you can be happy about that you didn't realize before. But the, 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 the final thought is this, is that the cutbacks, it's not for the rest of your life, you know, right. it might be for a season. 
You know, you do what you have to do, and it doesn't mean that, you know, you can't build your way back up. Maybe you find a new relationship eventually, and you eventually can get into that house. Your way back up. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, the, the problem that uh, my clients face, again, is they want the certainty. They want to keep things as much as they can normal uh, in, the, in this turmoil of a divorce. And so they're, they're, they're weighing the competing interest of, I want to stay in the house. This is what I know to the, un to adding to the uncertainty of, well, do I move out of the house and, uh, you know, go into a town home for a period of time? Uh, you know, what's that going to look like for me? But in the end, uh, as you noted, you know, change isn't necessarily a bad thing. And if you uh, reduce that particular expense, it may make more sense in the long run. You know, you, you, you start building up your savings. Uh, you know, the lifestyle, the house really isn't something maybe that you need anymore anyway when you're downsizing. Um, and you build some, again, some savings and some equity in the townhome. Uh, and then maybe, you know, you start saving for retirement and you've got more money to be financially secure and then maybe again you either get into a new relationship which very often happens and or you know look maybe a few years down the line you move back into a, a different home uh, but for the time being maybe selling the house although it may be difficult to do makes the most financial and actually you know from a psychological perspective makes me make the most sense in the long run I totally agree because the, the, the equation is, is critical. If your income is here, you've got to get your expenses here. You know, you can't be so many people, whether they're married or divorced or whatever, so many Americans are frankly spending more than what they earn and they're going into debt or they're spending right, you know, right in here. And what does that do? That puts you under such stress. I mean, I've been there when I was starting my business, you know, the, the stress of worrying about whether you're going to pay the monthly bills or not, you know, man, you don't need that. And, you know, much less that if, if you're, if you're spending right about what you make, you're not able to save and invest for your future. So now you don't have that financial security. I would, I would, I would certainly agree that getting your your expenses down as far below your income as possible that's got to be one of your top priorities because if you think about the top priorities in life finances in, in my opinion i think health is one of the 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 most in, important things that should be a priority for all of us i think relationships are critical and but finances is number three you know, if you're not secure financially, if you can't pay your bills, if you can't save for your future. So absolutely, I, I, I totally agree that, that, that that adjustment has to be made and it needs to be made sooner rather than later, but it's not as bad as people think. Right, no, I agree. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, from a, a legal perspective in a divorce case, you know, one of the factors that the court looks at is the standard of living of the parties. And sometimes, as we've been talking about today, people get a little too consumed with that standard of living and not realizing that they need to come off that. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and if you, as you pointed out, if you're if you're being you know fiscally responsible and you know trying to reduce your expenses to a reasonable number, you're going to be better off. You know, you're going to be ready to deal like with a COVID nineteen situation. Uh, instead of spending to the limit everything that you have every every dollar that comes in goes out you're going to be able to save uh and put your your head on your pillow at night knowing that you've got a little bit of a cushion there so that if something catastrophic does happen for a period of time you're furloughed or whatever the case may be you can survive you know d divorce is stressful enough co-parenting is stressful enough you don't want financial pressure in your life right 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 and i and i think you know it's it's if you prioritize uh to maybe not put all your money into the house right away and pay for a mortgage that maybe is more than you uh, really even need that again will give you if you take that money and again invest it with someone like yourself you're going to be building for your long-term security and i think you know that's got to be driven home so, 
Well, listen, this was a good, uh, good conversation today. I look forward to having some other conversations about some other topics that are important for both my clients and yours. Yes, looking forward to it, and I, and I enjoyed it. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Brian.